Yeah, I was going to say. She's on a plane, so. Yeah. The whole clan, Gerald, left town. You're clear. I'm free. I'm free. No, they, unfortunately. She got your cell phone. Phones work both ways. I know. <laughs> right? <I'm> sorry. <laughs> they do. They do. They work anywhere. <laughs> all, all over. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? You don't have to answer it. I know. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. Good. <laughs> oh. Any questions from <laughs> from last week? <laughs> I have a question. I don't know what it was. You said um, it's okay to try and manifest your house and your dreams and so forth. But uh, I don't know what the other half of the question is. No, actually, the, the uh, Kabbalists would be. Would be very upset with um, uh, the the movement about you know visualizing and getting yourself goodies. Mm -hmm. uh, they they warned against that. As a matter of fact, there's a teaching of an argument uh, that a bunch of rabbis were arguing uh, with each other, and one to prove his point said, "I've shown you this is right," and he manifested them. Um, a cow and some other things mm -hmm. out of out of the thin air. And <coughs> the, the, if you read the next tract, is that me? No, mm -hmm. me. Okay. <coughs> if you look at the next next tract, um, it doesn't say he didn't do it. He said what they did was they uh, said it was heresy, and uh, he was uh, thrown out. He couldn't have anything to do with it afterwards. So they, they never said he couldn't do it. It didn't exist in the track, which is the most interesting thing. To deny it was magic or make believe. They said it's something you don't want anything to do with. And they said the whole magic of Kabbalah is to is to use it for the benefit of all uh, all beings. Okay. Not for your own selfish. So you, you can't even use it for your own health or your own. It, it's, it's to be used for others. So give me an example of how that would be, if you were to use it for others. Well, it's the idea to, to perfect oneself so you can give others a direction of what's, what they're needed. Um, I know in my own way, people ask me, when I was in a remote area of Tibet, and um, I treated the hive tulka, and um, everybody, all the monks were very moved and they asked me uh, what I want in return. Mm -hmm. And I said, I want nothing for myself, just, just uh, blessings for all my patients. That's what came to my mind. Mm -hmm. And that would be pure Kabbalah. Okay. Hmm. So they said they would pray every morning as part of their prayers for all my patients. Mm -hmm. So that, that would be the, exactly what all the rabbis would tell you to do. You never did it for your own. They wouldn't even use it for if something terrible happening. If they were being prosecuted and, and tortured, they wouldn't use it for their own benefit. And that was the discipline. Okay. Yeah. So when, when they say the secret, the secret, any gram and all that came from Kabbalah. And when they said the secret, because I gave you the secret, which was the four worlds of intention, observation, feelings, and then consciousness of action. And that's the secret, how to manifest. But if you do it for selfish reasons, what happens is um, it all involutes. I don't know if I touch on that last week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the tferet, it becomes, mm -hmm. it, it, it comes into it, it contracts. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of stories about that. Yeah, but I'm not doing that. So, 
they were very clear about it, that it should be not, this is not where it counts. I mean, there was one great Kabbalist that was asked the question, why do they, what? No. Okay, it's okay. I'm, the, I'm usually the person doing that. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's why I put mine on it. Yeah. <laughs> no. Did I turn it off? I'm not sure. Yeah, okay, so the, um, the, he was asked, it was, it was a famous Kabbalist, and they called him a Rabbi Gamze Litova. So, and he lived in a time of, of horrible things for people where uh, they, they were persecuted and Cossacks would come into the villages and rape the women and all this. And people would come to complain to the Kabbalist or rabbi and he would say, but well, that's also for the best. And that became his name. I mean, they read Gamze Litova, which means all for the best. And finally people got fed up and things got worse in their lives mm -hmm. and they said, you, you need to explain yourself because you're losing your authority and your respect. And, and one of his followers said, you, you really got to give a teaching on this because people are misunderstanding. And he said, there's never been a holy person that hasn't done something uh, bad or something hurtful. And he said, no matter how enlightened and holy, there's never been one that hasn't done that. And he said, there's never been a wicked that has deliberately hurt others, that either inadvertently has, has done something good. And he said, everything, if we talk about sin, it's, it's being in the center, it's in the balance. He says, everything has to have its payoff. So he said, the wicked seem to prosper and benefit in this world. Mm -hmm. And the, the holy people tend to suffer, he said, because where would you like to pay your debts? And where would you like to get your reward? Here or where it really counts? And he said, if you understood how limited this existence is compared to what existence is, he said, you would rejoice in having an opportunity to suffer here and get it off the books. <laughs> then, um, uh, then getting your reward, and then getting your reward where, you know, where it really counts. It's not limited. So I mean, there's a lot of stories like that. No, he, he, no, no Kabbalist would say it's great. That just to, you know, suffer, they would know that's an imbalance also, to deliberately suffer. But if that's where the cause and effect happens, then this is the place to, to deal with it. Okay? Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, let's answer it. Let's, 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 let's well, then, um, so that means that you should be living a, a selfless life. No, 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 no. You asked me about manifestation. Mm -hmm. To perfect oneself is not a selfless life because you're perfecting yourself is going to benefit everybody. So if you prosper, you become wealthy, and then you use that wealth mm -hmm. to share with others. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. But if you're using the, uh, magic abilities that you can do in Kabbalah, and you can't do it in Kabbalah, Trust me, I know that permutations and stuff like that, and you do it for your own selfish reasons, mm -hmm. you're going to create a great deal of harm for yourself eventually, if not here somewhere else. Okay. You know, I'm talking about magic. I'm not talking about... Uh, I, I think every Kabbalist would say that um, you need to... You, uh, true self selfishness means true... Uh, work on oneself, perfect oneself, so you, you can be a whole person and fulfill your, your destiny and your purpose of being, having this life. That's, mm -hmm. that's a, a great opportunity. You know, they wouldn't say if somebody has a nice home and 
kids go to college that they did anything wrong. That's not what they would say. But if you're praying just for yourself for your own benefit, or you're using Kabbalistic magic, because once you learn the patterns, you can manipulate it. You know, it's, it's, there's no argument that that's happened throughout time. And if it's done for the wrong reasons, it will come back at you. And what I hear, you know, in some of this uh, kindergarten metaphysics, uh, you know, chanting for, for businesses and wives and husbands and, and all this stuff, um, is, is really misuse of, of what really are, your opportunity is. And a lot of times, if you just do the right thing, things will come to you. What do you need anyway? So, I mean, if you, if you use the energy to, to benefit everybody in your life, and including yourself so you can benefit others, mm -hmm. that's going to really help your health and your grandchildren, your children, everything. Mm -hmm. you know, if, you, you know, if you do it for the wrong reasons, it's, it's not the right thing. I mean, Nachman of Rotslov, uh, I talked about this before, was said that, um, that this is a garden to grow souls. And that the things that we suffer from is the fertilizer. And that if we understood the whole story, if we could access that, we would celebrate our own suffering. But it doesn't mean that suffering is the end. Suffering is the mechanism, it's not the purpose. And a lot of suffering is not necessary. So in my mind, if somebody is suffering, the quickest way to relieve the suffering is to deal with the cause. And most causes is ignorance. But certain sufferings we can't do much about. I mean, you're going to suffer as, as you go, go from, um, as, as you get older, you're going to suffer if, you, if you're attached to being, looking a certain way. I mean, one of the shocking things that happened to me in my career was in Palo Alto, when I was in Palo Alto, a, a, a Dutch woman came to me with long blonde hair and blue eyes, and she had an unexplainable neurological condition that she had been going all over for. And so she thought she'd try me. She was in a wheelchair, and they found no reason why she could have uh, lost her ability to walk. There was no spinal cord injury and nothing on the scans. Nothing that the neurologist could find. And she couldn't, uh, they couldn't find any cause. And I asked her uh, who she was. I remember the question. And she says, I'm everybody's dream, every male's dream. Mm -hmm. And I said, Will you be every male's dream when you're 94 and you don't have no teeth? <laughs> yeah. Zoom. And she said to me sincerely, she said to me, it's never going to happen. I'm always going to look this way. And those are the ignorances. So she set herself up for, for lots of suffering. And that's what suffering is. It's not necessary. Attached to something that's impermanent. You had to figure out what was wrong? Neurological. Yeah, it wasn't neurological. It wasn't neurological at all. It's obvious. I'm not stupid. She's been going to everybody for neurology, so I'm going to. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? Justin, uh, same thing, just having fun. Learn about uh, <laughs> Kabbalah and healing and body talk and meditating and things of that nature. So, yeah. Yeah. Liz, and I've been 
all of the classes. Looking forward to this spread tomorrow. <laughs> I second that. <laughs> My name's Dina. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Paul, and I'm looking forward to my lab, discounted lab test. He's set me up for this week. I'm going to tomorrow. Yeah. You're going to do it tomorrow? Yeah. So that, well, that didn't take much effort on my part, did it? It was so easy. So I'm very appreciative of that. So. Anybody that needs lab tests that doesn't want to, I'm now set up to do it. You're it's amazing. These are the things you were showing me. Yeah. Blood work, any sort of lab test. So you can get your blood type and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Is it what? Blood yeah. type? Yeah. Anything you want, any of the lab tests. I haven't felt the codes for the other lab tests, and that's just Quest. Yeah. So I'm going to have to call the company, the co-op, and see how I get codes for other things. Yeah. I had somebody that wanted, that has this um, obsession that he's worried about cancer. And they, they have a, a, a test that um, is 99% accurate. You can pick up if you have cancer. About $150, $60, I don't know exactly what they did. I think I get 10% off on that one. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that test is it won't tell you where the type of cancer is. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's a lot of cancers that are you're better off just ignoring and not 